A very interesting picture has appeared on the internet in recent days. A JH-7 fighter jet was retired and handed over to an important industrial university. The JH-7 series has endured more than 30 years of great years, and now it is stepping into the retirement sequence, together with Su-27SK, Su-30MKK, and other classic models, reflecting the profound changes in the equipment system of the Chinese Air Force. So, why did more than 200 JH-7 series fighters start to retire to the second line? Today, we will talk about this issue. First, Let's talk about the fighter-bomber concept. In the 1960s and 1970s, the world's major military powers one after another began to develop fighter-bombers with a certain degree of air combat capability, while focusing on ground-to-sea combat. For example, the Soviet Union's Su-24, Europe's Rafale, the United States F-111 and so on. Into the early 21st century Russia, also launched a new generation of Su-34 fighter-bombers. The European development of the Rafale fighter-bomber after the mid-term upgrade can even mount AIM-120 medium-range bombs, with a certain degree of medium-range air combat capability. In 1979, due to the practical needs of various aspects, China started the famous H-7 program, which was renamed as JH-7 program in the mid-late 80s. The first flight of JH-7, was successful in 1988, and a long period of scientific and technological research and gradual improvement began. During this period, due to the limited technology of China's domestic engines, the JH-7 used two British Spee series engines. The JH-7 program was in the middle and early stages of development and was a Navy-driven model, a series of specific design and mission requirements, mainly for naval warfare maritime anti-ship combat needs, and did not consider too much ground attack mission. The JH-7 series of fighters was developed from the 70s to the 90s. In 1998, the JH-7 fighters were finally finalized and began small production and were equipped with the Naval Aviation Corps. In 1999, the JH-7 was publicly unveiled at the 50th anniversary parade of the National Day. In the game over the East China Sea, Japanese pilots realized that the PLA forces began to deploy a new type of fighter and has enough range and combat radius and Japan's F-15J fighters repeatedly circle. At this stage, the JH-7 had limited overall performance and was not produced in large numbers. In addition, due to the restriction of British export engines, only a few dozen JH-7S were produced. Since the late 1990s, China has upgraded and improved the JH-7 on one hand, and on the other hand started to find ways to solve the constraints of the UK's space series of engines. 2005 saw the finalization of the fully upgraded JH-7A, which has begun mass production. Compared with the JH-7, the JH-7A has 11 mounting points, a maximum mounting capacity of about 9 tons, a maximum takeoff weight of 28.5 tons, a combat radius of 1,650 kilometers, and a maximum range of about 3,700 kilometers. Belonging to one of China's strongest mounting capacity. JH 7 fighters have been equipped with the Air Force and Naval Aviation Force after the mass production of JH 7 fighters. According to the statistics, more than 200 JH 7 fighters have been produced, and in 2009, the domestic WS 9 series engine was finally finalized which ensured the smooth mass production of JH-7 A fighters. The first half of the 200 JH-7 A fighters produced in China are powered by the British Space Series engines, while the second half are powered by the domestically produced WS-9 Series engines. The latter half utilized the domestically produced WS-9 Series. As of before the 2020s, 100 imported Su-30S and more than 200, Domestically produced JH-7 series fighters are the absolute mainstay of the PLA Force's ground-to-sea strikes. As of 2017, the JH-7 fighters were only discontinued. In the 2010s, China even launched the JH-7B fighter with more comprehensive performance, based on the JH-7 fighter. However, in view of the actual situation in all aspects, the JH-7B fighters were not mass-produced but were technically reserved. The JH-7 was, after all, a fighter-bomber platform frame, and many aspects of the original design and layout could not be adapted. After entering the 21st century, the fighter-bomber concept has lagged behind. The development of a full-fledged multi-role fighter based on a heavy fighter is the latest development idea. For example, the F-15X of the United States and the J-16 of China are similar development models. In 2016, 
China's J-16 fighter jet was finalized. The J-16 fighter belongs to the heavy four-and-a-half generation fighter and is able to simultaneously undertake a series of combat tasks such as air control operations, ground and sea strikes, and its combat performance is very comprehensive. China has even launched the J-16D electronic warfare aircraft on the basis of the J-16 as a heavy fighter aircraft. The maximum mounting capacity of J-16 series has reached 12 tons, and the comprehensive configuration in all aspects far exceeds that of imported Su-30 and domestically produced JH-7 series. According to the statistics of foreign media, as of 2024, the total number of J-16 series fighters has reached about 400, which belongs to the absolute main type. With the large number of J-16 fighters equipped, the status of JH-7 series fighters began to decline significantly. In order to adapt to the combat missions in the 2020s, the mid to late production JH-7 fighters began to undergo mid-term upgrades, upgrading to the JH-7 A2 standard. In addition to being able to mount new types of munitions such as ground-to-ground -ground cruise missiles and precision-guided munitions, it was even able to mount Thunderbolt 12 medium-range munitions which also provided a certain level of medium-range air combat capability. After all, the latest batch of JH-7 series fighters was even produced in the mid-2010s. As of now, they have only been in service for about 10 years and are still in the early stages of service. A picture appeared on the internet in recent days. A JH-7 fighter jet has been decommissioned and handed over to an important industrial university. Some professionals found that the retired JH-7 fighter jet belonged to the first batch of the 1998, finalized production through the number of the fighter jet. As of 2025, it had been in service for 27 years. Generally speaking, the service cycle of warplanes is around 25 to 30 years. The first batch of JH-7S has been in service for 28 years. In addition, as the first batch, it must have undergone intense training, testing and flying in all aspects. Whether it is the life of the airframe or the configuration in all aspects, it has already reached the conditions for retirement. Not only the JH-7, China's Su-27SK and Su-27UBK fighters imported from Russia in the 1990s are also being decommissioned in batches and handed over to aviation universities or theme parks around the world. Even the Su-30MKK fighters, which were delivered in 2000 and have been in service for 25 years, have been handed over to the aviation universities under the Army and have begun to take on the task of training new cadets. Since the 1990s, all kinds of weaponry produced by China or imported from abroad have begun to come into service after the 2020s. After entering the 2020s, all of them began to be decommissioned one after another, such as Kilo class submarines. Ka-28 helicopters, S-300 anti-aircraft missile systems, Mi-8 helicopters and so on, have begun to be decommissioned one after another and transferred to the local authorities. At present, the early batches of JH-7 series fighters have begun to gradually retire, but the JH-7 series of fighters will not be completely retired in a short period of time. After all, a significant portion of JH-7 fighters were even produced after 2010, so the early batches of JH-7 series fighters will be retired one after another. The later batches will be fully assigned to the second line of deployment and use, but will not be retired within 10 years.